hello, my name is Damir. I'm a PhD student uh, in CF in Katia Ben Fathers group. And I'm a bioinformatician by training. And today I'm going to introduce the package that we developed in our lab, which is called Gene Selector. <clears throat> so before I start, here are some guidelines for, for those who would be interested in this talk. So mostly it's aimed at bioinformaticians who perform routinely bulk RNA sequencing analysis and who sometimes, and like maybe most of the time, they have batch effects in the data set. And also for those who are interested in using the uh, Python machine learning packages, but they still have to do a lot of bioinformatics in R. So with this, I would like to introduce the problem at hand, which I feel every bioinformatician faces on a daily basis. So imagine you do RNA sequencing experiment and all works nicely, and then you do the pre-processing steps that are necessary to obtain the, uh, your data in tabular format. And then uh, the aim now is to perform differential gene expression analysis to select the relevant genes in your data set. You do that exactly, and you arrive at the picture that looks like this. So you do a typical PCA as an exploratory data analysis technique, and you see there are two clustering of your samples. And you might be very excited at first because you see a very clear cut separation, but upon further inspection, you see that it actually is separated not by the factor of interest, but rather by the confounding variable, which is in our case, is the location variable. So you don't really want to see that. And in this case, differential gene expression analysis is quite limited. Uh, moreover, it has other disadvantages, namely that it's univariate approach, so it studies um, one variable at a time versus the outcome, and it's still very um, not robust to false positives, so you're still expected to get some of them. So your next line of thinking, uh, you think, okay, so what if I do some basic machine learning uh, feature selection on this data set to probably tackle some of these problems? and you do the machine learning based selection, you apply your methods, and then you get the, your gene lists, several of them, and then you um, get something like this, which is very, very um, hard to judge by this picture alone, because as you can see here, the performance of every method is quite very, uh, is quite on the board. So it's really hard to say that one method is better than the other. Then of course you might think, okay, so what if I aggregate uh, those methods together, either uh, by taking a union or an intersection. And uh, of, more often than not, uh, such thing happens that union is still a very big list, so it's not very suitable for the downstream, um, or intersection might be too small or even non-existent. So you're here wondering what to do. And it's actually a very, uh, very big question in this area of research. So how to select exactly a gene list from this wide array of different possibilities that you can think of. So we had this exact problem on a quite regular basis. And to um, combat this, we have came up with this package, which is called Gene Selector. Um, and it has some different features. So it's very user-friendly, has extensive tutorials and documentation. And the main idea is that this is your guide in this process. So by applying the metrics that I will shortly speak about in the further sections of the talk, you can have an informed decision on which list to pick exactly. Then it's quite customizable. You can plug most of the things that are compatible with the scikit-learn library. Um, and the backend is entirely written in Python. So it breaches the gap between having to switch between Python and R, Python for machine learning, and R for bioinformatics analysis. So everything is conveniently put for you in one place. Um, and now I would like to start with a brief, somewhat description of the tool, what it does, and what section does it have. So first of all, it all starts with the input data in pre-processing. So you have your intra sample normalized matrix of transcripts. Uh, then in the package, you have some basic pre-processing that is done. And then by the end of it, you get your filtered matrix that is ready to be submitted for the pipeline. So after that, there are several different machine learning methods implemented in the package. But if you're not happy with any of them, you can substitute them or add any other method that you think would be fit for your problem. Then the actual gene selector procedure is performed. So I invite the listeners to read the paper and to maybe inspect the GitHub repository for more details on how it exactly it is implemented. 
Mm, but in the end, you get your feature selection list. So for every method, you get the list. After that, you would like to set the feature importance. So there are several different methods to do that. So inbuilt feature importance scoring, then permutation importance, and then the feature ranking to see how uh, the feature fares in a, in this like mm, more objective way of ranking the features. So after that, uh, you can also provide any uh, feature list that you have at hand. So for example, it could be differential gene expression list more often than not, or any other gene list that you might think that are implemented in your biological process. After that, there is an integration with the cluster profiler and simplify enrichment to perform gene ontology enrichment and uh, semantic similarity analysis. And after the whole process has been performed, you have other metrics that I will speak shortly about. And uh, by leveraging all of these metrics together, you can then have a uh, informed decision. What is your winner list and what is the suitable list for the downstream analysis? So uh, here I will introduce some of the metrics that are implemented to guide the process. So starting with the first one, which is, of course, inspection of uh, machine learning per performance metrics. So you have feature importance plus here. And also you can have a machine learning performance metrics for different kinds of metrics. So cross-validation score, uh, F1 score, recall precision, accuracy score, and any other metric that you can get from scikit-learn package. After that, you can analyze the overlap between the feature list using, for example, an upset plot that gives you this kind of nice representation. And also you can also quantify how the overlap looks like. So there are different coefficients are implemented and then you can quantify the degree of overlap between different lists. And after that, the most important thing, of course, is to assess the biological relevance. So one of the methods is to quantify how many of the parent terms of interest um, are spanning the offspring uh, nodes in your list. So for example, you take the gene ontology graph, then you pick the parent uh, term of interest. So for example, in this case, it's either immune system process or defense against bacteria. And then you calculate how many of these offspring nodes are there in your data. And then you can get a representation like which list has uh, more of them compared to the others. Finally, uh, there is an integration with Simplify Enrichment, a very nice package to perform semantic similarity analysis and cluster these terms. Again, it's quite straightforward to do. So first of all, you do the gene ontology enrichment, and then you calculate the semantic similarity score between the gene ontology terms. Um, you then cluster these terms, and then you can inspect the word cloud like here to see uh, what are the clustering results are being produced. So here you see the output that is obtained with the, uh, within the Simplify Enrichment package workflow. As for the availability and tutorials, so the package is a CRAN listed package. So usually you won't, you won't have any problems installing it. So by simply calling install packages program in RStudio session, you can get the package. Uh, then all the tutorials and the description of the functions and the implementation are available in the official GitHub repository. Um, along with that, there is an extension, extensive um, example of applied to TCGA breast cancer data set with all of the out expected outputs and the guidelines how to uh, follow the workflow. And uh, the package has been implemented in Docker as well, so to make sure that it runs on most of the machines. So with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and um, good luck with uh, using the package.